Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV, where it is literally my pleasure to be joined by my pals Emma Viacelli and Claudia Leonardi, the amazing creative team of the Life is Strange comic books. And uh, guys, we are here, of course, to celebrate the upcoming release of Life is Strange Volume 4 Tracks, the uh, collected edition of issues 13 to 16 of your hit ongoing comic book, which, by the way, you can order from the links attached to this interview. <laughs> How are you both? Yeah, doing okay. Feeling like um, time doesn't exist anymore. Like, I think we are living in Life is Strange because yeah. I feel like we spoke to you last week and I don't think it was last week, but it feels yeah. very recent. It's <laughs> yeah, almost it as if- It was some months ago. <laughs> yeah, it was some months ago. Or maybe we were having almost this exact conversation a few minutes ago. Who knows? It's possible. Mm. <laughs> it's it's it's, uh, it's lovely to see you both and uh and of course um life is strange has been a massive hit for you two guys and a massive hit for titan comics and you know our mates over the developers because you delivered such a beautiful comic book um that's so in keeping with the bounds of, of 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 the game itself what can you tell me and what can you tell our viewers about volume four tracks Right. Well, where to begin? Um, so, ho yeah, hopefully, as you say, everything's been in keeping with the game. One thing we cannot be in keeping with the game is, of course, when the game it's an interactive process where you as Max can go back, change things, see a different outcome. That's very difficult to do in a comic. And yet we've decided to try. Um, <laughs> so with uh, Tracks is the first time we introduce well, not introduced, we've seen this universe before, but basically we're introducing a parallel running timeline by diving back into the Dustverse, which is what we're calling the, the original timeline. Uh, so we're not only going to be following Max and the road trip being taken that side with her and Rachel and Chloe, we've also got original Chloe in the Dust timeline and we're going to literally follow both of these timelines at the same time, having some... Um, yeah, brain bending uh, chances to see how one timeline might affect the other and some things might be subtle and some things are less subtle. Uh, so that's the key change in tracks. Okay, now, now that's very interesting. And that sort of, to me, sort of begs the question about how did you go about writing and illustrating the dynamic between Chloe, Rachel and Max, especially once the truth about Max's past in another timeline came out? Um, Lauren, our, uh, our mighty PR manager, who uh, is a big fan of your work on this book, was saying to me the other day that um, the characters seem to be very accepting of Max's <laughs> previous life at this moment in time. But is that going to last? I mean, in terms of them being accepting, partly that comes out of them as characters. And I think we'd written it and drawn it in such a way that by the time Max's truth is revealed, Chloe and Rachel, this is in the, the Waves verse, they've already seen what Tristan can do. So his kind of moment of revealing that gave them a better foundation for understanding that something really weird is going on and that, and Chloe's sort of had that feeling throughout that this Max, there's something hasn't quite gelled. So also for the sake of us and telling the story, we could have easily spent a couple of issues just with them, you know, battling against reality and being like, no, this can't be true. And Max having to explain it. But we've kind of seen all that in the game. We saw her having to explain uh, to her Chloe and, and, and bring her into that world. So we would have just risked repeating it again in the comic. So I think it was easier to move the story on and have them come from a position of understanding even the things that are much tougher to understand, like Rachel understanding what happened to her in the other timeline. Um, so for how I've uh, written it, mostly by banging my head repeatedly against a wall <laughs> and understanding the two different uh, timelines. And I've made Claudia's life and Andrea's life very, very difficult because she's having to, yeah, keep, <laughs> keep track of two entire timelines. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I, I was, I, I, I <laughs> was, uh, yeah, thank you so much, right? I, I, it, it's, it's interesting that you've said that because the, uh, Claudia, I was going to ask you actually, is A, did you enjoy the process of um, researching and illustrating the real world locations on the road trip? And how did you and Andrea go back, go about inserting differences to help the reader navigate, you know, which version of that road trip they were in? 
Well, for the first question, yeah, I, I really like the process of researching for the environment and everything because uh, it gives me uh, the possibility of uh, knowing new places that I've never been before because uh, I'm in Europe. I've never been to the United States, so I don't really know what's going on there, uh, what the places look like. Uh, so it's very fun, but it's, uh, it's long and complicated because uh, I always try to make the reader feel like we are in a real place that is uh, in the real world. So the, um, the research has to be quite extensive. And uh, I, I can just, um, I don't feel okay with just, uh, you know, putting a wall there and something there, drawing uh, a generic uh, house uh, on the background. I, I try to, um, to go in, into details and uh, try to find um, what makes a place uh, um, stand out uh, from the rest uh, and try to draw it. And for the differences between uh, the two timelines, uh, apart from the character design differences, uh, the, some are more pronounced, some are light differences. Um, Andrea, from, since uh, we work together, I, I can talk uh, for him in this one. Uh, he uses a slightly um, toned down palette for the, um, the dust verse version, the dust timeline, where the, the one where Chloe is alone. And uh, yeah, but this is the, the biggest differences, I think. Yeah. The, the palette is helping and like everything Claudia is saying about her, her background and attention to detail and that immersion it is amazing like when I was planning the the road trip like the it wasn't even just uh looking at some places they could visit I literally had to sit and work out how many hours it took to drive between locations to get a sense of could they realistically get there in that time where would they have to stay over in that time um and and then Claudia takes that on and like multiplies it by just diving into those locations I mean I wanted to choose locations that uh I mean I, I want to go on this road trip now I have to say huh? <laughs> now that we're spending yeah, time on this road trip this is a great road trip one day we'll do it we'll go on a life is strange road trip um it's a really good route and and uh, in tracks we go to a few of like the initial um uh I won't say where because it kind of spoils it but there's a couple of stop-offs um, in these next couple of arcs uh, they're all places I'd like to visit and they all magically managed to have significance to our story like it was managing to find places that not only were amazing to look at and that Claudia has just like knocked out of the park like the seeing how they look on the page is incredible but but also places that managed to yeah somehow have relevance or an impact or could be read into in a way that affects the story um which because it's it's very difficult writing a mobile story I don't it's the first time I've written anything that's like a road trip and it was very much a kind of notion that came down to us as this would be great if we could do this so it was kind of one of those okay I'll see what I can do with this um I normally like a stationary story because you can build so much more around you get the environment becomes part of the story the people in that environment become part of the story Whereas on a road trip, you're kind of, you're untethered in every way. You don't have that safety net. You've got to find, it's always new. You know, you can't yeah. relax into anything. Um, so what I have got on this road trip, which again makes Claudia's life even harder, is it, it wasn't enough just to have Max, Chloe and Rachel on a road trip. We need some characters around that they can play off of. And they have to be characters that could be repeating characters. Uh, it couldn't be brand new people every time, not with a story like Life is Strange. So as a result, we've got them following the tour route of the high seas uh, in both uh, timelines. And then we also have the cast of Hamlet, uh, the play that Rachel's doing, um, who obviously, for obvious reasons, they're only in one timeline. Yeah. Um, so that in it, uh, sorry, they're not only in one timeline. Rachel's only in the cast in one timeline. Yeah. Which leaves a gap in the other timeline, which, I'll, oh, <laughs> which we won't say any more about. Um, so... Yeah, it's an awful lot of characters to keep track of and Claudia and Andrea are having to, through drawing and palette, 
sometimes I'll help out. Like there's certain things early on that happens to one particular character in one timeline and not in another timeline. So at least then we know that when we see that character with a certain feature, we know which timeline we're in. So it's kind of trying to find <laughs> ways of differentiating the two. Um, but uh, yeah, this we're very much into that dual how do things cross over, what affects each, and it is important for the reader to know which timeline we're in, but we're not going to pretend it's going to be an easy read, it takes some effort. <laughs> now, what, what's your process um, between the two of you for plotting out and illustrating those, those timelines? How do you keep that straight in your creative mind? For my part, I have um, many documents. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of timelines. I've got uh, in our uh, Dropbox folder, there's a uh, document like where th things we wouldn't necessarily even use, but there's like a document that has the entire cast of Hamlet, all of their real names, a little bit about their lives. Most of that's not going to be used. Similarly, we've got a map with the entire road trip showing the hours between them, the kind of features on, on the way. And then that has like arrows that show this group in this time, get there, there, and they go there. there. So it's kind of... um yeah just lots of notes basically scribbled everywhere yeah. and um and i still don't manage it all the time what was it recently claudia phoebe our editor picked up something um i'd put into one of the scripts one of the newest scripts and she it was a small thing but she caught it and she oh it was a it was a term that was used by one of the characters in one of the timelines and she said i don't think that this character in this timeline knows that term to use that and I was like, oh, you're right. That's that came up in the other timeline. So I still, so thank goodness, you know, Phoebe's on the ball and um, caught me on that one. <laughs> That's yeah, it's a, it's a difficult process. I, for me, I usually use uh, from the layout uh, to the finish, finishing the page, I use uh, two different colors when I'm sketching the pages. Uh, I use, uh, I, I use for, for Max, uh, for the waves verse. The waves um, timeline I use orange, while for the the dust verse I use um, blue. It's so because useful because it means when I'm looking over the roughs as well, I I like <laughs> know exactly which timeline we're in. It's such a good idea. <laughs> that that's a, that's such a clever thing to do, um, guys. What what are your favourite things about the high seas? Um, the band that uh, you know, the two of you and Andrea co-created for the for the comic series, and uh, and whose tour forms the backbone of of one of those road trips we were talking about. Um, what 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 drew you to that concept, and what did you like about creating them? I I like drawing them. I liked creating them. Um, their character design. Uh, I still like, even if I. When was it the first time we drew them? Two years ago? Three years yeah, ago? Whoa, yeah, something like that now. Time but ago. I still <laughs> like them. I like to, to dress them, to change uh, their clothes. Uh, they're, they're very fun to draw. There's a, an issue uh, that's not out for a while yet. Um, oh, you've drawn Tammy in yet another outfit that I'm like, oh my, she just looks so good in everything she wears, that girl. Yeah, I love to dress her. <laughs> yeah, I love her wardrobe. I couldn't wear it. She looks amazing in it. Um, also there, I feel like one of the things that I liked playing the game for Life is Strange is that you kind of wanted to get to know a lot of these characters. You just wanted, well, most of them you wanted to get to know. There were some you'd rather not know too well. Um, but they were so alive and so you kind of got a sense of their inner workings and with the high seas i think my favorite thing about them is that i, I just want to hang out with them i i think you'd have a really good time like i just want to go to one of their gigs and have a drink with them and um they all they just feel like a really solid crew um and i think our characters have been quite lucky to to get to know them um because they're sort of they're quite a tethering force i think I think that is a wonderful thing to be able to do in uh, in fiction. I think you guys have really achieved it with the book. Um, you know, to create say a, a band that you want to hang out with, it's like when you're a little kid and you're watching the monkeys, right? <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh man, I'd love to be there and do that those things mm. with those people. When I was a, a kid, this is an embarrassing admission, and <laughs> I found it out by going back. We moved house a while ago, and I found a lot of old sketchbooks, and I'd forgotten. When I was a kid, I I invented a band and 
there was no music because obviously I didn't I didn't make their music or anything but I I wrote diary entries from the band members and I wrote bits of interviews and like I drew sketches of them they never existed they were a completely fake band and I decided to be a fan of a fake band <laughs> <laughs> um and like I knew all these dumb things there were all these stupid questions like what shampoo do you use and them answering like so clearly <laughs> So this was just waiting to burst out of your subconscious. <laughs> Finally, I have a real band. <laughs> that is absolutely Dream. wonderful. <laughs> and on that, on that, um, creating your own reality around you as you go. Note, um, we're racing towards the end of our time discussing Life is Strange Volume Four tracks. Um, my final question for you guys is: I know that the comic book adventures of Max and Chloe will continue. And I know you guys can't say too much, but are you already hard at work on the on the issues to come? Very much, yes. Um, yeah, basically the as you say, we can't say much. It's the, the story is continuing. Um, so expect more twists and turns and additions. Um, but yeah, we're absolutely yeah, we're working hard. <laughs> Brilliant. I, I look forward to it and I look forward to uh speaking to you again about volume five in what will yeah. feel like another nanosecond no doubt yeah yeah well you never know we might be um the world might be turning back to normal by then you never know hey, two fingers <laughs> crossed for sure <laughs> so so this has been forbidden planet tv i've been um talking to the spectacularly talented uh, emma viacelli and claudia leonardi about the beautiful Life is Strange ongoing series and specifically uh, the Volume 4 Collect Edition tracks, which you can, you can order from the links attached to this interview. It's great to see you guys. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you. Thank and you. everyone stay safe. Stay safe out there, guys. Yeah, you guys both <laughs> stay safe and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.